Welcome to The Interesting Podcast, episode number 143. And Happy New Year, friends. We survived 2020. We did it. I'm glad you're here. Well, my guest this week to kick off 2021 is the incredible Raquel Horsford Best. She is genuinely one of the most insightful and hardworking people out there. She's so fun to follow on social media. I recommend it. We talk about her dancing at Carnival in St. Kitts every year, auditioning for Stomp, traveling the world with that show, what that was like as a black woman, a beautiful experience she had when she first landed in South Africa, going to business school, starting Rock Your Best, and so much more. Raquel was such a delight to chat with, and you're going to love her. Also, check her out as Connie in Sylvie's Love, now streaming on Amazon. Spoiler alert, she's fantastic in it. But before you do that, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 143, with Raquel Horsford Best. Theme song time. Sure, sure. You know, we, we, they made it a point that we go back home and know where we came from and, right. and you know, visit our grandparents and our cousins. And um, so that is my second home. You know, I am a citizen there and, um, and you know, I, I really identify with the West Indian culture of my, myself. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah they i mean they live there now oh right on yeah they live they retired and they live there now so um you know B- bc before covid yeah <laughs> for real <laughs> <laughs> uh i would be in st kitts right right now as we speak sure the holidays um yeah it's i'm kind of sad cuz i bet I get to see my parents like once a year or so mm-hmm. maybe twice a year if they they come to the states but um we usually kind of meet my brother and i we make it a point to go there to just kind of do a family reunion yeah 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 and, um so yeah but since covid um they've they've shut down the the borders right and, um they're actually doing well they're healthy they um since covid started they had um, 25 cases, reported cases, um, 20 people recovered and five are like in quarantine. Sure. Sure. So so they've controlled it. Yeah. That's amazing numbers. Sheesh. Florida's the opposite. (laughs) They had to because, um, uh, you know, it, the population is like maybe 50,000 people. Oh, sure. That could wipe out a country. Yeah. That's you know? nuts. What a, what a crazy time we're living in. Can you think about that sometimes? It's crazy. And um, yeah, you know, it's funny because carnival is my favorite time of the year. Yeah. And back, I always participate, um, but they're doing carnival virtually. Oh, okay. So they're kind of like, you know, put, putting a stamp on like the virtual carnival Mm -hmm. and they're still kind of like televising you know the calypso shows and the calypso shows and sure just you know um you know keeping the tradition like our folklore dances and yeah all that stuff so they're still doing a show so like you know people on the island could kind of feel some kind of spirit and the people that are abroad could kind of you know, connect. Sure. Oh, that's cool. It's like, yeah, the show must go on. You adapt. Must go on. And this year is their 49th anniversary. Wow. So, so they they kind of said like they had to have this celebration in order to celebrate the 50th next year. Oh, smart. Like, keeping yeah. Open. Like, we're gonna celebrate 50 big. 
but in order to bridge to that, we can't just like not have 49. That's we true. Can't, we can't just drop our spirit, you know? I respect that. Keep the momentum. So, yeah. Right on. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah I didn't realize that. Because I, so, it, oh, man, what a, did they move straight from St. Kitts, your parents, to New Jersey? Because that seems, okay. <laughs> My my maternal grandmother moved here in the late '60s, mm -hmm. and she and and she found a job and a, you know you know applied for citizenship for the family. Sure, uh, you know found a house and just so that her children could you know have a better education. Not that sure. that good but actually not the education part it was more of the opportunities after school sure so she did and she set up the family and then my grandfather and my um, mother and her three siblings uh, came to Queens New York there you go there you go <laughs> hey a lot of great things come out of Queens yeah yeah you know so they did that, and um, then my dad immigrate, immigrated here, I think, I don't know, like 69, 68, I, I'm, I'm not really sure, but, you know, both of, the, both of them knew, I think, knew each other from the island, but oh, cool. they came up at separate times, and then sure. met at, a, at a, an event, probably some petition event, some no way. family friend, a mutual friend party, and and then that's how they hooked up. Right on. How cool is that? <laughs> to, to travel that far away just to meet. <laughs> way, this, this little island, this beautiful paradise. Come yeah. to me. Yeah. Yeah. So that's how it happened. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I've, been, I've been to Antigua, which is oh. near St. Kitts. I got a tattoo in a guy's garage. I don't recommend it. It's not, it's not, it's not a good idea. It was $20. Uh, but you know, when you're, when you're 18, you make dumb decisions. So that is my, <laughs> that's as close as I've gotten to St. Kitts was <laughs> in a dude's patio getting a, a yin and yang tattoo that, uh, it's not even. You got it in Antigua? Yeah. Yeah. It was, we were there. It was like this excursion type thing that was a part of this trip that we were taking. And we went, I remember we went zip lining, which was cool. And I was like, I want a tattoo because I'm turning 18 and this guy's like sure <laughs> and you know <laughs> so I, <laughs> um, yeah. I think of that and she is 50 miles away from St. Kitts aha uh -huh. okay so I've been within 50 miles. <laughs> 50 miles that is the birthplace of my maternal grandmother oh connection there we go she doesn't have any yin yang tattoos no she didn't have smart any. smart woman no tattoos for grandma. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> She's a smart woman. She's a smart woman. I don't recommend. Get an actual tattoo artist. <laughs> I, I love those stories. My first, well, my first tattoo, my only tattoo, I got it in Hong Kong from a guy that had no, not one tattoo. What? Yeah. He what? had a white dress shirt, no tattoos. I gave him a picture. I drew what I wanted and he gave it to me. No. <laughs> Look at this. That is actually really cool. Uh, and uh, what were you doing in Hong Kong? I was on tour with Stomp. No, you guys went to Hong Kong? I didn't know that. Yeah, I was uh, oh. I was on the European tour. No way. Yeah, we went to, it, that was a fun year. We went to Hong Kong. We went to Singapore. Wow. We to, yeah, uh, we went to, oh my God, what was that like? It was crazy. Like we we were we went from like Germany to France to Spain to Portugal to Hong Kong, Macau. Wow. Um, uh, well, did I say Singapore? I think I did say Singapore. Mm. Um, China. We went to Be um, Shanghai and Beijing, um, Africa. Like I went over all over the place. It was. No. Really it was a history, world history. I bet. NBA. Like, it was amazing. Yeah. Was wow. Amazing. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. 
yeah, I learned so much from people and just what, I mean, it, just how the, the world moves and yeah, history. I mean, it was just mind boggling. It was just, sure. just, just learning about like being in a country and learning about the people, why they move the way they do. Um, and then learning about their politics and just, I felt so in it, just, you know, having conversations with strangers and eating their food and sharing. And oh, yeah. it was just incredible. Man. It was, incredible. yeah. That's the good stuff right there. Just like human connection where like, I find that if you don't speak the same language, actually, even if you do, because so many people grow up so differently, there's still that that I don't know what that is, but there's that speck of like, oh, right, we're people. It yeah. transcends all of that stuff. You yeah. know, it's, it's so cool if you're cognizant of it, you know? Yeah. You know, you know it's, and it's, it's interesting traveling as a black woman. Sure, I can imagine. You know, everywhere I went, like when I went to Europe or Asia, you know, they identified me as like, uh, American. Oh. When I was in South America, they would um, identify me as like a Brasileiro or like or, or um, a Panamanian or. Sure. They would just kind of, it was interesting to see how they perceived me. Right. You know, and how, you know, they would do that. Um, uh, unconscious bias, I like, bet. Oh, you're, you know, you're a, you're a black American. You're not like the black Africans. Right. Sure. You no, know, you're not like them. It's so easy to box you up. So it was just, it was really interesting. Really. Um, yeah, it was interesting. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. And you, I imagine you probably learned to like, navigate people pretty well having accumulated those sort of experiences absolutely um like you said um you know when i sit down with someone a stranger from a completely different world mm -hmm. we, at the end of the day we just want to live a good life mm -hmm. your family to be well you know it's just we all want the same things yeah but don't take, you know, a lot of people don't take the time or they don't have the opportunity. Absolutely. You know, they don't have the opportunity. Um, uh, they, they hear all of these, um, you know, when I say, oh, yeah, I'm coming from, where are you coming from? I'm coming from New York. They're like, oh, like they kill people. They have guns. <laughs> you know, I went to South Africa. They were right. like, oh, they're, they're, oh, you're from New York. They, like, have guns. They Everybody walks around shooting, shooting people. <laughs> What? Sure. I was like, what are you talking about? Right. Yeah. And I was like, no, that's no, it's it's not. You're like, it isn't, you know? Right. I I love talking to people like that, especially when they have like this idea of compartmentalizing something they don't understand, right? It's all this thing. Which yeah. like I can get from a point of view that like it's easier than actually understanding. You know what I mean? Like New York is its own ecosystem, really. It's like Chicago is another great example. Some people think of Chicago and they're right away like, okay, well, here's the violence. Here's all these things. I'm like, but that's not Chicago. Like you're, you're having the whole thing do this, you know? Exactly. Um, Bonkers. It was, when I went to South Africa, um, try to make this story short. Um, I was, I was, uh, I, f I flew, it was like a 24 hour flight. It was just oh, God. It was a long flight. Yeah. Um, and um, I landed there and I had this over, like I was overcome with this emotion and I walked off the plane. And I started crying. Like, really? I just started crying. Like, like every ancestor was just like moaning and crying and hugging me. And I just felt, I really like felt, this like hands were all over me yeah and um i was crying and then i land i let and i was walking in the airport and um there was a chorus of people a south african choir singing welcoming people and then i just lost it oh 
everyone that knows me, like if I hear like a choir, like or with children, I just the water works just yeah, like, just gets you. <laughs> I, so I was like crying, and I got my bags, and the one of the promoters picked me up from the airport, and this it was this white African um, man, and um, he had like that kind of heavy like Dutch sure accent, Dutch accent. And he's like, come on, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Chop, chop, yeah. chop. <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, you're messing up my moment here. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying I'm just, to talk here. <laughs> no tears. I'm, I'm, my people are talking to me. Yeah. You know, and, um, and so, so I was like, okay. And, and he, he drives me to his home because I, I think they were waiting for like my hotel to get ready or what, whatever. So mm -hmm. he drives me to his home. And it was like this gated community. I was like, oh, this is interesting. Yeah. And, and I don't know. I just, I was, I, I was so young. I was like, so how is it here? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I heard there's a lot of like, you know, guns. <laughs> I'm thinking like, you know, apartheid just like happened. You know? Sure. It just ended a couple of years ago. Like, what's up? Yeah. So yeah, he's like, you know, he's like, Oh, there's many problems, many, many violence, and many this, and they just get pregnant and a AIDS. And he was just rambling on with the. I was like, I was like they? It's like yes, the Af I was like, well, I'm black. I'm, I'm of African descent. He was like, no, no, not you. You are different. You're American. And uh, I was like, okay. And I was like, Ugh. oof. But like I go into his his gated community home, and it's like. I felt like it was in a movie. It was like plastic on the chairs. Doyle, oh, God. He, like, he, you know, gave me like some tea out of his silverware and his children were on the wall like this. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, what? Is this? I, was like, I couldn't like leave any sooner. I was like, I, I need to get out of here. Yeah. Um, and then I was driven to the hotel and it was, is in Johannesburg, but it's in this town called Pretoria. Oh, okay. And that's like where a lot of the stuff went down. Oh. And um, and I get there and it's like people are on the grass playing croquet, and women are like with, like with their white brim hats and gloves and having tea, and I'm just like, it yeah. felt like I was an 18, eight, you know what I mean? Like. <laughs> I was like, I'm on a plantation right now. Like, why am I here? Yeah. Like, I'm very nervous. And because it's like all like black servers, black maids, black. All oh, sheesh. Black. So I was just like. Goodness. It's making me feel very uncomfortable. Yeah. I need to leave. Um, but then I made friends with all of them. Oh. You know? And they were, they, all the people that worked at the hotel and. You know, they want to know what like America was like and what we did and da da. And we just talked. We had such a great time. And you know, I like when I left. I left like I gave away like some of my things. I was like, "Do you like this?" And they're like, "Yeah." Like nail polish. I was like, "Do you want this?" Like, yeah. <laughs> so they were so lovely and sweet. And you know, they call me like they call me like my sister, and they give me like Zulu names and like. They oh, take, cool. They were so, so welcoming and so beautiful. And um, they really wanted me to feel welcome. And at the time, there was a lot of, um, uh, there was a lot of violence, a lot of like armed robbery and all that stuff. And, you mm -hmm. know, the producers were, those promoters were like, don't go by yourself. Don't do this. Don't do that. And, Honestly, like the pe the black people on the tour, we were like, we're gonna be okay. we're we're fine. Yeah, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna connect with these people, and we're not gonna make them feel less than. We'll we're good. Sure, we're like we're from New York. <laughs> I don't know if you've heard about it. <laughs> I know, like when I go to the Bronx, I walk a different way than I walk. You know, than yeah. I do. I know how to do this. That's um, right. Yeah. So um, yeah. So you know we we would go into the town and we'd go into like these little hole in the walls and like have a beer and like like their local beer and their tin cans and like their there you go and this, like you know we really like got in with the people and it was just so it was just an experience i'll never forget and um 
I do remember an instance where um, there was someone that came to our show and um, they, they invited me and another castmate to, um, to have dinner. Oh. You know? And um, I, I don't know what happened, but I couldn't make, I, I don't know what happened. I couldn't make it, but my friend went and he said he went, they, they made steel pan drums. Oh. So that's where they, they, that's where they lived. They lived where they made their drums. And he said they made a fire and opened cans and warmed up like some beans and like put it on a plate and he ate with them. And I, and I was like, you're kidding. He's like, nope. And they're like, come have dinner with us. Yeah. Come have dinner and eat and we're going to have a great time. It's like they had no, it was just about sharing. Yeah. It wasn't about, oh. you know what I mean? It was I just. I love that. The spirit of them is so beautiful. Like they'd have nothing and would give the shirt off your back. They would have nothing and be like, we're going to entertain you. Yeah. You oh. know? And, and it's kind of like that for all of the world actually like I was in I was in Singapore and the same thing I went with a friend and I think I went to get like after the show like you know stomp like it's very heavy on your feet so I think I went to get a pedicure or something yeah. <laughs> no sure. one was going to see my feet but I was like those need to take be taken care of <laughs> yeah. so, you know they're there <laughs> they're in boots but they don't know but I know that's right um, that's right I get it I understand. <laughs> yeah. So, um, I'm sorry. I, I feel like I'm skipping all over the place. This is, this is what I do. It's just a chat hanging out. I love this. So, um, I was getting my, my toenails done and I was with my, uh, another castmate from the show mm -hmm. and they were like, okay. Oh no, I was getting reflexology. That's what I was getting. Oh, even better. Yes. So then they were like, they were like, okay, it's lunchtime. And they just stopped. And I was like, they're like, you're going to have lunch with us, right? And I was like, no, we're fine. We're good. We're good. <laughs> like, no, you're having lunch with us. And we are like, well, I looked at her and I was like, oh my God. They started popping out their Tupperware, all the ladies that worked there. Oh. Put a blanket on the ground. And we all sat on the floor like a picnic. And they popped open their Tupperware. And they were like, and everyone was kind of like using their hands. And I was yeah. like, yeah. <laughs> So that's when like the American part comes out. <laughs> like, uh, uh, and they, they were popping out stuff and I was like, Oh, um, and I didn't want to refuse anything cause it wasn't like the typical food, like Chinese food, Thai food and all that food that we get here is not the same. When sure. You go to the place. Right. Yeah. I was in Singapore and they had, it's like Malaysia, like it's food from everywhere. And they pulled out like these brown, like these eggs that were like brown. Oh. And now I know that they, they boil it in tea for it to look like that. Like uh. now I know. <laughs> <laughs> but at the time. Twenty, You know what I mean? Like when you're 20, <laughs> you're like 20 years old. You're, I'm just like, uh, that egg is brown. Yeah. <laughs> So good it's so good it's so good and i was like <laughs> no I'm, i hear I'm, what you're saying <laughs> i was like oh I'm so cool. i can't i can't eat not one bite um, so yeah i mean but this what i'm what, what i what i'm coming to say is like they're so generous like yeah knows how, knows how important family and community is how food brings people together um you know culture it's just i think if we spent time sharing you know our culture that would bring us together i mean that's why it was such a beautiful experience when i was touring because i was touring as an artist you know and yeah. able to um you know the language of movement and sound and music and storytelling you know sure it's just it just permeate permeates through people and it touches people and and um in a way where they could see something and interpret it in their own way you know yeah they, you know they could 
they, it could trigger something inside of them. It's just, you really, it's just like touching hearts, you know? Open. Yeah. And I think when you do that, they're less afraid of you. I think so. And they're like, oh, I got that. Sure. It's there. Oh. It's that bottom level that we're all the same. It's like, this extra stuff doesn't matter. It's the, it's here to get past that. I promise you there's a connection here that we're all human beings. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I think that's the importance of art. Yeah. Art transcends all that stuff. It's like music is the same way. Dance, I'm sure. Like yeah. there's, it's something yeah. ethereal. I mean, when I was in, when I was in, um, when I was in South Africa, I, I, I think I took like a road trip to Soweto. Cause I wanted mm. to see Mandela's home and oh cool, and I just want I just need it as like I have I'm here yeah have to, totally um you know I went to art buildings or dance studios where black people weren't allowed to be in there like three years prior to wow that. you know that's how like apartheid happened and like you know um things started to get integrated like I think in ninety one right early ninety and then it didn't really settle in until like 2000, you know? Isn't that crazy? So like up until, 19, up until 97, there were some establishments that did not allow black people in. And when, when I heard that, I was like, what? Right. Like, huh? Yeah. Like, I, like am I alive in this century? Like, to right. ex experience this? You know, yeah. Nice. You know, and, and, you know. I just found it very offensive when they said like you're not. That's not you. But I'm like, they are me. Yeah, hundred percent. They're me. Absolutely. They're brothers and sisters, like they're me. Yeah. yeah. Um. And so yeah, it was just. It it really, it really um affected me in a way that I don't think uh, any other place has affected me just because, you know, just, just the, just the history, just um, the history of just being, um, you know, kidnapped and yeah. then, you know, yeah, sisters were dropped off in the Caribbean, you know, and that's where our story began. It's crazy. So it's crazy. It's just, you know, it, it's just, so, I mean, you know, and you, you know, the story, you know, families were torn apart as mm -hmm. the, as the journey happened, people connected and acted as people's mothers and acted as people's fathers and aunts and uncles. And then, okay, your cousins. So we are family. Like in that sense, we, very well yeah are related you know what i mean absolutely so yeah so that trip really was a very emotional um trip for me um, yeah and yeah at the end of the day you know they want they're dreamers like yeah you know, I, I would be i would i would run outside because running outside to me, I felt like so connected with the place, like running on the earth. I know it sounds sure. No, it's absolutely. But like the earth was so like, it was like red. The earth was yeah. It's like a visceral experience. And I felt like I was floating when I was running there, and it's very high altitude. Mm -hmm. Um, I remember when I first first uh, got into my room, I fainted on the bed. Oh. I Went to sit. I went like after my twenty-four hour day, and I, I literally did like a stupid thing, and I, I just wanted to like flop backwards in bed, and I missed the bed. Oh, no. <laughs> that altitude, I just I fell, and I just like kind of clunked out, and I was I I laughed at myself, and I was like, oh my god, I, yeah. <laughs> the altitude got me. That that was funny. Um, sure. I would run. I would run. I would run daily just to connect with the earth and i i don't know something about this running and seeing the air like smelling the air and i would you know again bump into one of the workers at the hotel and he's mm -hmm. like oh, you're from america oh it was it's my dream to to go to america 
my, I was like, what's your dream? And he's like, to be a cricket paint player. I was like, really? He's like, oh, it's my dream. I want to yeah. be He's like, I want to go to, you know, Antigua or Trinidad, you know, because the Caribbean is very, it's a, and I was like, oh, I was like, I'm from, you know, the Caribbean. He's like, oh, oh, I, and just like, just to hear them have these dreams, they feel like it's so like, not even tangible. They live so far and they're like, we're so far away. I can never afford to go there. Right. The proximity, like. It, it will never to them they're like it'll never happen but they still dream it doesn't right you can't help it it's it's in it's in there like they're just like and actually that keeps them alive yeah uh, hope hope is one of the most important things anyone can have i find especially yeah. those that like anyone that comes from any sort of hardship everyone i've talked to that's had like a rough childhood or anything like that that i can connect with it's like that's the common denominator that's how yeah. you get out of it it's yeah. all about hope. Yeah, it's all it's about crazy. Hope. I, I find that inspiring though, because like you strike me as a, a, a person who's like cognizant of what's going on below the surface. So you're able to feel the earth and have this experience of like, I come from here, you yeah. know, and you're able to have like that, your ancestors feeling you like, I think that's so cool. It says something a lot about you that you're like, I don't, it's like a spiritual experience almost, you know, like you're, you're listening which most people aren't. But I also find that super inspiring because someone who descended from this area was able to go into a place that wasn't able to happen just years prior. I yeah. love that. Like Tyler Perry, the fact that he bought a studio to make his movies that was previously Confederate land. How do you not get super inspired by something like that? You know what I mean? That story is just... Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah. And it's like the, the, just the, the power of the human spirit and the perseverance to see like, and then the art that comes from that, like, oh, it's so good. It's so good. Like, I don't know, I don't know how you can't be inspired all the time by seeing these things. You know what I mean? Exactly. 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 Um, yeah. There's beauty in everything. If you just, it just depends on your perspective. I think so. I think so. Do you, do you find that you're, are you an introspective type of person where you're like traveling the world and be like, I'm from New York and I'm seeing the world right now, you know? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, I really have to say that um, my, my grandparents, my, my parents, like I've learned just to always be grateful. Yeah. You know, like my parents always, you know, they taught me please and thank you. Sure. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's that simple sometimes. <laughs> and, you know, and respect. Yeah, and yeah. that is just something I take with me. And um, no matter who you are, what you do, I just think that everybody deserves to be thank to be thanked for whatever they've done. Yeah, um, I agree make them feel like, you know, appreciated, um, and a human, yeah. you know, <laughs> I mean, that's, that's basically, that's basically it. I mean, um, there, you know, there's places in the world that are not my favorite, you know, Fair. So, <laughs> you know there's like, you know, I want to keep this positive, but like, yeah. <laughs> um, maybe I shouldn't say, but like there's some European countries that are, they're very, their culture is very cold. Sure. Like, they're just very, doo -doo 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 -doo, and, and you know. Yeah. And. That gives you the other perspective. <laughs> don't really allow for the heart to open. Totally. And, you know, sometimes it's hard to connect with that. So it's just, you don't feel a connection. And totally. that's, that's fine, you know. Yeah. Um, but most of the world really, <laughs> they really worship like, you know, the, they, the, they nurture the ground. They're into growing things and, yeah. you know, and paying homage and respect and respecting their elders. And, you know, even like in, in, the, in the Caribbean, you know, it's like when I was a kid, you know, everyone's doors were open. Right. You know? Mm -hmm. And 
you know, um, whoever the elder is like, you know, you know, my grand, my grandmother's, my grandmother's Miss Hosford. So she's like, Miss Hosford, you know, hello, hello, Merry Christmas, good day, good night. Like you heard everyone saying something, um, sure. well, a greeting or like, um, or someone say, oh, I'm so thirsty, it's so hot. Be like, hold on, you want some water? And then they bring it out and- in Yeah, you know, it's communal. It was communal. You know, someone is hungry, like, come, come get something to eat. You know, yeah. it, it, was, it, it was just that, you know? And, you know, un, you know, now it's, I don't know, I think it's less of a village. And now people are traveling and families are living apart. Mm -hmm. You know, you have stranger. It's just, it's just kind of like um, the tr some of the traditions and family tightness gets kind of lost a little bit. Right. Um, and you know, but we, I, I, but I think that it's there. It's there. Like people innately want family. They want community. Absolutely but I feel like the world is going so fast and we're, we're focusing on things that really don't matter. And absolutely. Uh, validation for people that we don't know. Yeah. Um, you know what yep. I mean? Like, oh my God. All these outside things, you know, people are more, more, um, you know, occupied by, you know, the numbers they get rather than like, making their parents proud or you know yeah like it's, it's just it's crazy. a weird it's a weird time to be alive it's like because it's so like none of that stuff actually means anything but you put so much value on it but what i find is weird is the like the short-livedness of it you know what i mean like say you make like just for an example you make a youtube video right cool let's say it blows up gets a hundred thousand plays all right cool now what it doesn't mean anything <laughs> You know, you feel good for like a day. <laughs> if even. It feels good for a day. And yeah, it's, it, you know, unfortunately, there's people that have lost their lives this year. Yeah. And, you know, some of them I, I could think of that had made a really big impact on people's lives. And, you know, when you leave this earth, you leave with the way you've made people feel and the way you've impacted people. A hundred percent. I think it's so heartwarming when people pour out their their condolences about how the person made them feel, how they changed their lives, how they they um, influenced them and in, in where they are or the great things that they're doing. But the saddest thing is, is like when people do pass away and there's nothing and then maybe they're rich or maybe they're successful in that way and there's just nothing to be said and yeah. that is like oh that's the real that's oh. the real loss yeah like and i think you know oh my gosh and it's just so it makes you shake your head like that's not the way to go right <laughs> you know I mean? right like, i agree that's not the way to go like who cares how much money you have? It's true. Can't take it with you. That's yeah, it. I totally agree. But that goes back to the importance of a human connection, you know, because there's that thing where like I find like my mentor died a few years ago and it's one of those things where he was one of those people that like he rippled, you know, like anyone that he met, like you could tell at the funeral, like I'd lock eyes with a stranger and be like, oh, right, we both. I can see him in your eyes and you can see him in mine. And it's just this, it's transcendent, you know? Yeah. And like, that's, that's the beauty of love really and compassion. And like, that's why I think art is so important because art, you can convey that, you know, with anything really. Like, and it's something that like, I, I love following you. I've been following you for some time <laughs> on Instagram. If there's any police officers listening <laughs> And I, I can, I see it. I see it in, in everything that you do from like your carnival stuff to your rock, your best stuff to like everything. I can see that there's love that you're putting into it. This isn't like a, 
a surface thing of like, oh, I'm just kind of doing this thing because, you know, people are like me. I was like, no, no, no. That's why I was so excited that you decided to talk to me <laughs> because I, the, through Instagram and the things that you're doing, I could, I could see it, you know, and I was like, I wanted a glimpse. <laughs> thank you. I, I, uh, thank you. I really appreciate that. Um, yeah, I feel like, you know, even my, even my Rock Your Best, when I started that, I started it first because I was really missing the, the Caribbean culture. Yeah. It was, it's not really prevalent here in LA. Right. And I just wanted to hear my music like a couple times a week, you know, and, hey. and move and, and, and I realized how my culture has molded me as a person, my spirit, my, just the way I look at things, um, create things out of nothing just yeah and just also you know keeping a tradition of my people you know so so totally. i was like i i this makes me feel good i go home every christmas to do this like why can't i have carnival every week yeah you no know? i love it so i created it and when i was teaching it i just saw people just like come out of shells i bet you know? And, and I gave them permission to like move in a way that felt strange to them, but it was very organic. And, and I, I gave them permission to fail. Yeah. To go left when I went right. I gave them permission to feel weird and yeah. feel off. I, because I mean, as a professional, when I grew up, when I was growing up and, you know, paving my way towards professional dance career, right. you know, I had, to, I had to make those mistakes and falls in the club and the, the, the room where I was training. Sure. If I didn't fall, if I didn't like, you know, twist my ankle or break my toe or, you know, if I didn't do those things, you know, knees and hamstrings or whatever, like that's just the way it is. Like, yeah. And, and I roll through the punches and I, hell yeah myself therapy and I keep on going and and what keeps me going is this you know yeah this spirit like my my kindle is just always red it's always yeah always, you know it might you know it might like it might like not be as you know crazy energy but it's always lit yeah always lit and I never want to put that out because it's something that makes me feel alive and um, it really gives me um, comfort because I feel like I do carry my ancestors on my shoulders Yeah. and I know how hard they've worked and there's ancestors that I don't know about that, you know, came here and, and I, I, I cannot go through life without doing things in, in their honor. Yeah, absolutely. And doing things and not giving up and, you know, and, you know, not trying or being, being fearful because, you know, really it's like most people are just fearful of success, you know, fearful. Yeah. Of, I think. Fearful yeah. Of yeah. I say fearful of everything. <laughs> you, know, I, you know, for the longest time I, you know, in our business, you know, auditioning is the thing that gets you the job. Yep. It was validation. It was, I had to be validated to get Absolutely. a job. They had to say yes. Like, yeah. so for me to say I didn't want to feel validated, that would be a lie. Right. Of course. Because that's what an audition is. You know, yeah. you <laughs> it's true. Am I good enough? Yeah. <laughs> you know? you got to get permission to do it. That's the worst yeah. part. Sometimes they're nice. Sometimes they're like, I'm sorry. Or they write it in the email. Your agent tells you. Yeah. You know, or you don't hear anything, you know. That's um, the common one. Yeah. <laughs> you find out you didn't get it when it's on TV and you're not in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've watched um, commercials that were in the background. I'm like, I've, hold on. <laughs> That's who got it. All right, that's fair. That's fair. He's got a face. I get it. Yeah, but, but you know, being on the other side of the table, like there's been times where I had to consult or I had to be, you know, uh, 
movement coach or um, yeah. a, a choreographer on a job. And then I'm like, whoa, it's not that I don't want anyone. Sure. I just need one person. And <laughs> sure. Not that that person's not good. That person just had something different that was cool. Right. But you never know that. No. Nope. <laughs> like, we don't get that insider information. Like, if someone would just have said, oh, I love Rock, Rocky, I love Raquel, I just, she, I love, I love it, but we really need her to be, like, I, I did have an audition where someone, the choreographer was like, I love you, I think you're amazing, but this, the, this, the hero of the job, the star of the show, is like six foot tall, and we need girls that are five seven, so you're three inches too short. She told me that, and I was like, thank you. Yeah, right. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> like, yes, she loves me, but I'm too short. Sure. Cool. But if she didn't say that to me, I would have been like, she hates me. That's right. <laughs> I've been making up all these stories. So like, you know, oh, yeah. we do life making up these stories because we just don't know. It's like that void. It's like, please just tell me. Yeah. But unfortunately, you're not going to be satisfied all the time with that information. And you just have to be steadfast in yourself and strong within yourself. Be like, you know, so most of the time now, I'm like, you know, like my manager would give me feedback. She's like, awesome. You're doing better every time you put out audition. Boom. I'm like, thank you. And I was like, you know what? I actually feel better. Yeah. I know I've been working on it. And I, and even if I didn't get it, like, I actually, I'm like, I'm really proud of that. What I did. Sure. You know totally. what I mean? So I, I mean, I wish I could have what I have now mentally back then. Always. Um, Always. <laughs> I wish I could have that secure security in myself yeah but i mean that's what that's that's experience isn't it that's life life c'est la vie yeah it's it's true it's so true i i find the only thing that helped me was if i go in and i do my best it sounds so like cliche and dumb but it's like if you do your best you literally couldn't do better so if you know that like i gave it and that's what i got it's either good enough or it isn't and if you can, but well, you know, that doesn't come right away. <laughs> like yeah. you said, I wish I knew this back then. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, you know, and you know, and then the other, the other, the other flip side is like, and you're going to have people, people also like not being really supportive of you or, you know what oh. I mean? Oh, yes. The people that are envious mm-hmm. you know? or just don't understand. And they're like, are you really doing that? And I'm like, Yes, I'm still doing it. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I don't need you and the voice in my head saying the same thing. <laughs> I know. It's funny because um, my parents were so supportive of me. Like, they've never said, you know, they never was like, don't do what you did. I mean, I literally went to to business school. What? Really? I went Why? To- <laughs> because I wanted to be, to make my parents proud and like. Of course secure and like have a job in corporate corporate america and oh yeah 401k and like do the do the, <laughs> the easy track <laughs> yeah, I, I went to business school and i i did internships and all that stuff and i was wow. like cool i mean i could do this i was like i think i think in a way i was like i just wanted to like prove to myself that i could do it so if, if what i really wanted to do didn't work out that i could right do it if I wanted to of course um so I did that but then my second year my sophomore year I was like oh my god I have to do I have to go I have to do something in the arts like I have to dance yeah so I I applied to do a, a, a BA in dance at the at the the, the Mason Grove School of the Arts so oh, cool. it was the the conservatory so I double majored. So I was in the business campus, then I was the arts campus. I felt like two people. You got left brain and right brain working at the same time. It was crazy. It, it was both heavy loads. They were both like, like every semester I had like 22 credits. Oh, and like it was just good God. <laughs> it, was it was insane. Um, so I did that, and you know when I graduated 
I was getting offers for jobs and whatnot, and I decided to hold off. I didn't want to accept anything because it just didn't feel right. right. Sure. You know? um, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to take a break because I, I did, you know, high school, college, straight through. Sure. I was, you know, I was like, okay, I, I, I need a, I need a reprieve right here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I did that and, and I started um, auditioning mm-hmm. in New York and training and, and that's when I, that's when I got stomped and my parents. No way. Yeah. I, the story is kind of interesting. The story is really fun. Um, I auditioned. Okay, so I went to the audition. I was dancing with a, a, a New York dance company at the time. Okay. And I went to the audition with a couple of uh, members of the, the dance company. And we went to um, this place called West Beth. And it was mm-hmm. like this kind of artist co-op building in the West Side, West Village in New York. Um, and this building was like, yeah, it was on the West side and right in the the middle of the village. And there was people like wrapped around this building. Like people were like playing drums and stretching and like doing mime. Like there was all these characters (laughs) like for like miles down the street. So me and my friends, we were waiting online and we, we waited, we must've waited for like four hours or three. We were waiting for like three hours at the time. Wow. And they were like, and it was summer. It was hot. Sheesh. My friends were like, I'm leaving. I, <laughs> I was like, and I'm again, like, what do I have to do? I'm like 20. Sure. <laughs> where am I going to go? <laughs> I'm like, where are you guys going? They're like, we have lives. We are leaving, you know? <laughs> and I was like, but we've already stayed three hours. That's and good point. I was like, what's one more hour? <laughs> <laughs> we're right here, guys. <laughs> no, literally, like, I could see where the steps were to go in. I was like, oh, one more hour. What are you doing, guys? <laughs> I'm with you on this. <laughs> so, so we left, and I stayed. I stayed. And, um, yeah, you did. I got up to the steps, and then the, the creator of the show um, said, all right, that's all we're going to see today. Take another oh, no. step what so um (laughs) number 1000 and blah 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 sure but um so i came back the next day and i think i was like number 300 and something like you know a new number yeah i came back and we did like this workshop of i can't really remember but we did like every day we would do a number from the show Okay. Um, I don't know, like, if your audience is familiar with Stomp, it was just like this musical that played unconventional instruments and um, sinks and whatnot. Yeah, just and then we just made sounds, uh, we just discovered sounds out of these unconventional things, uh, you know, everyday things, and made an orchestra out of it and had, you know, comedy to it and like story, like characters, and it was all about interaction. With wow. People and 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 connection and it was just a musical phenomenon and yeah at, at the time it was um stomp um bringing the noise bringing the funk and um blue man group and we were all in the vill- and we were all on the east side oh um, um and it was before like you know bringing the noise went to broadway and blue man group went you know touring into vegas and like like, you know, it was just like the beginning of the, you know, and Rent was on Broadway. Like, it was just like all of this performance art and just like people were saying things and like making commentaries on like life and. Yeah. It was getting gritty, you know. Sure, it's happening. And it was happening and we were a part of that. And it was just, it was really groundbreaking. And I was so proud to like, be a part of that error but um cut to back to the auditions you know i was getting called back every day it was like a four-day audition process like really? it, 
was so it was so grueling, like physic, the physicality of it. And it was so scary because they were like, okay, make music with your hands and feet. And I'm like, really? Yeah, they're like, like you have like hundreds of people giving you ones and twos. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dance, dance. <laughs> and go. And you're like, dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a. <laughs> doing this, the slap thing. <laughs> yeah, and, you know, and it's just, you know, it just made you go way outside of your box. It was just literally like the show was discovery. Even when like people started the show, it was just, it was so brand new. And we were so, we were so bright eyed and like wanted to create and just like let our instincts take over. Yeah. Um, I eventually, weeks had passed. I think I did it. I auditioned like in the summer. And I think like maybe a couple months had passed and I was just like, oh, am I going to have to work for corporate America? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Sure. How do you come I, back? I was auditioning. I was auditioning. I was getting out there. I was like, you know, and you know, I didn't have an agent at the time. So the open calls were four hours long, you know, yeah. it, was just, it was that thing. And, um, so, you know, I, I remember, I remember I was, I think I started like substitute teaching at one point. Oh, okay. That's different. I was like, okay, I'll just like, that'll be my side hustle. Cause there you go. My parents were like, you have a college degree, <laughs> you're not working at any restaurants. And if you want to cook food and sweep the floors, here's a broom. You could go in our kitchen right now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. You know, they're not wrong. <laughs> that was my, my parents, like, they were like, no. Sure. <laughs> That's where their buck stopped. Right, uh, yeah. They had their limits, too. <laughs> so, um, so I, I remember I was, I was, I think I was just like, uh, I literally was like, getting to the point, like, what, I have to do something, like, something has to happen. Right. And I was, literally, I was like, I think I was eating ice cream out of a pint which i think that was probably the first and last time i've ever ate out of a pint because yeah. <laughs> that, that yeah because i was just not really feeling good about myself that so, is the meal of somebody who feels that way <laughs> i was eating i better have it now i was eating <laughs> and i got a call oh like i got a call and i was like um hello and they were like Hi, this is Scott from Stomp from the Frank Richard Frankel Building office, and I was like, "Hi, hi!" And I was just like, "Hi." Put the ice cream down. Uh, uh, right. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, we would like to offer you a contract for the Stomp show in New York, and I was like, "Um, okay. Can you hold on for one second? <laughs> I was like, die. I was like. And then I got back on the phone and I, and then and I was like, okay. And they're like, we'd love to see you on, um, I, I don't know. They like Sunday, we're going to have a, we're going to have a, oh, we want you to come in. You're going to sign some papers and then you're going to watch a rehearsal. And I was like, fantastic. I was like, yes, yes, absolutely. Sure. I, yes, I'm going, I, I would love to be part of the show. Absolutely. I was so, I, yeah. I was so happy. I was so happy. Um, and I went, I went and I like, <laughs> I'm laughing at myself now. Cause I like, I got dressed up. Like I wore a dress, like I wore oh, a no. dress. <laughs> to stop. I said, yeah. To stop. And, uh, <laughs> like a denim dress. I remember a denim dress. Killing it. Some like clunky, like platform shoes. I looked very kind of like you know, villagey, like New York. I was in New York, you know? Yeah, you're killing it, killing it. <laughs> so I was like, they want me to come in, sign papers, watch a rehearsal. Look like a boss. I get yeah. it. They're like, um, you can sign these papers. I was like, great. They're like, okay, now uh, put your shoes, put your stops, put your shoes on and stop. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, wait, what? Wait, oh, it's re rehearsal, like rehearsal. <laughs> they uh, use the word watch with me um <laughs> watch. Oh. Uh, yeah so anyway it was funny i had to dig and find some clothes and 
like, you know, the basement, they had like a bin of clothes, like people that wore the shirt. <laughs> yeah, so I could, like grab something and like the clothes I grabbed was like clothes from a performer. She came on stage and like looked at me like. <laughs> <laughs> the universal, like, is that my <laughs> shirt look? <laughs> so sorry. I had no clothes. <laughs> yeah, that was very funny. Um, but, um, <laughs> I made fast friends. And it was, um, I had to, I had to learn the show in like three weeks and they were shipping me off to tour. No way. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Right into the deep end. Right into the deep end. Man. But, um, yeah, so I had, I was familiar with Stump with just like the TV performances that they were doing. Sure. At that time, like, you know, billboards in Times Square and like on the buses. So I was familiar with them in that sense. And they had just done the like Academy Awards and um, stuff like that. So they were like, hey, um, we would like you to come see the show. And I was like, that would be a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit of research maybe. <laughs> I did pretty all right at the audition, so. I think so. <laughs> see the show. I'll check it out. Yeah. So, <laughs> I sat in the balcony and I looked down. Ahmed was in the show as well. Perfect. Um, and, you know, the cast, the cast was like, they were all like six foot tall. They were like, yeah. <laughs> so, so I'm watching the show and their limbs are like flying everywhere. <laughs> and like, I see formations and they're just like going this, right? Sure. And I'm like, trying to follow people follow Just the chaos <laughs> I was like, okay i'll follow her because i'll probably be doing her track and i'm like oh my god how i i i, I started crying while, while watching the show i was like i can't do this Is, what have i done <laughs> how they're uh, how they're clapping on the right beat. i don't understand how they're not killing each other i don't understand <laughs> I don't understand. I just didn't understand how they were making this magic. Yeah. I, and um, I literally was like, they picked the wrong person. I was like, they picked yeah. the wrong um, <laughs> But I calmed myself down because Smart. it was something I've never seen before. It was so spectacular. Yeah. It was so amazing. And it was new. And it was like the first year that they were bringing in like an American cast. Right. And, so we were like kind of like the first, you know. Yeah, the foray. Oh so, yeah, because the show, you know, the creators are from England, from Brighton, England. Right. So, so it was just kind of like they passed the torch. Yeah. And, and it was just, it was just really. I mean, I'm friends with all of those castmates, and they're they're more than castmates. They're they're like my brothers and sisters. Like we grew up together. Yeah. We traveled the world together. We have so many memories and um, and we speak a language, like the language of music and putting a show together and learning a show together. Just mm -hmm. like, it's just, there, there's just, there's just something that it's really, it's a human touch. Like we could look at each other and like nod and like, I know like I got to push it up or I need to slow it down or yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's that shorthand There's frequency. Shorthand. Yep. Shorthand language, like we, I could just look at them and, or I, you know, they could put up like three numbers and I know like what number to hit. Or yeah. they're like, huh! and I know it's the break. And like, literally there's been so many times where we've done stomp shows and put it together 20 minutes before the actual show. Wow. You're gonna do this track, you're gonna do this track. We're in a groove. On, on, you know, on the fourth bar, we're gonna hit a break, then you're gonna solo, you solo, you solo, you solo, we're gonna go back to the groove. Like there's a language yeah. that, and there's a music sheet, music that we know that we can just call it up and connect with each other and vibe with each other. And it's just, it's so magical and it's helped me connect with people, you know, it helps yeah. me teach. You know, it helps the, the way, the style, the way that I teach to pull people in, to make them feel like a group inclusive, um, to give them fire, to give them like a yeah. ah, injection. 
So it's just, it's been such a great life lesson. Yeah. And I've done a lot of things after a yeah. lot of, <laughs> a lot of great fun things, but you know, everyone has, that has done the show always goes back to the show. Yeah. Yeah. Because it was that phenomenal. It's lightning in a bottle and you it have that shared. It was lightning in a bottle and like only like maybe a hundred or hundred, maybe 200 people know about it. That's so cool. You know, and it was just, you know, can you imagine like, you know, by the time I was 25, I've like visited, you know, toward all of North America, Canada, you know, United States, South America, Asia, Africa, Europe. Like I saw yeah. everything and I learned so much. I did, you know, I know a lot of people that go on tours with like artists and, and, um, you know, they go to their rooms and they just do the show. Like, right. like I need to see the people. Like I need yeah. to, see I need to see the people and, um, yeah. I Actually to- experience it. <laughs> As opposed to like, I've experienced the world's hotel rooms. It's like, but it's right outside the door. It's right there. <laughs> you know, and I realized like a lot of places I went, I was like the first like black person that some people have ever met or saw. Yeah, I bet. You know, I, I remember I went to, um, I went to uh, Chile and my friend, one of my best friends, Lynn, she, um, we were on the tour together. She was like my, my tour buddy. And we'd go out and we were in Santiago and we'd walk and visit the shops and stuff. And people would just peek out their windows and like, like oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're just like, what? What is right. that? You know? is there something on my shirt? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they come out of their storefronts and like peek out. And, and, and after a while, we were just like, okay, this is enough. Like I bet. And then there was all these like young people like kind of surrounded us and we're like, what? What <laughs> uh, like vanilla sky, like slow motion. We were like yeah. <laughs> You've got that post grenade ringing in your ears. <laughs> yeah. And then they were like, No, famoso, famoso. And we're oh. like, Oh. And we're like, they they think we're famous. <laughs> oh, you just shake your hair? Well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. We get it now. We get it. <laughs> and, and they were like, oh, stop. They're like, oh, yes. And then they started to like stop. Oh, cool. You know, and that was kind of like some of the icebreakers, you know. Yeah. Even getting like agitated, like what? What is it? Yeah. And, and just to even like break that ice and have that communication like no i didn't we no we admire you we want we we know you're famous and we're thinking like we're just in a show doing our thing you know what i mean right so you know we we, i i didn't see anything glamorous about it you know at all (laughs) I i didn't even think the impact that we were i was having yeah you know i didn't realize i didn't realize it Um, so that was, that was a story. And I remember, um, we were also walking to get some food and I saw, we both saw, um, this black soldier, this guy, this, an army fatigue, black guy. And we looked at each other. We're like, (laughs) Hey, (laughs) Hey, we were laughing. We're like, Hey, you're, you're black. You're what? What are you doing here? Yeah. Like, you're are like, you like stomp? <laughs> he's like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, based army base here, and da, da, da. And I was like, oh, okay. And then he was with a friend, and this, his white guy, with, you know, with army fatigue. He's like, he's like, anytime you have a problem, just make sure that there, right there is U.S. Embassy. You have a problem, it is our duty to protect you. Da, da, da. Yeah. <laughs> So that was a, another first for me that that I was given, you know, I was I was I was being approached by a soldier saying that as an American citizen that I was going to be protected and if anything yeah. that they were there for me and I was like, 
whoa. Yeah, right. Maybe <laughs> I am famous. <laughs> but, but it's so crazy. It's so crazy. A couple of times, like experiences that I had like that, that I, I was given more respect for a citizenship to America abroad than I was ever here. Sure. I've That's... never. <sighs> by police officer, by an army person or anybody of that kind of authority sure. that ever been approached saying that they were going to protect me. So yeah. you get what I'm saying? Like, yeah, oh yeah. Heart, heart, heartbreakingly enough, I am not surprised. <laughs> so, so, you know, it's, it was just a very it's a wild, how, like, whoa. You know, like the gentleman in Africa, you're different. You're, you're American. You're a Black American. Sure. You know, um, in Chile, if anything should happen, the embassy's right there. You're American. We, it's our job to take care of you. Right. We're in America. Yeah. <laughs> I'm freaking scared to pull over. Yeah. I yeah. don't even allow my son to walk down the street. Understandable. Isn't that so, wild? It's, it's just... It's just pretty wild that, yeah, it's pretty wild. And, and like, I think it's also crazy that, like, and probably good that you experience that younger. You know what I mean? So you can have that sort of, like, perspective. Because I find that a lot of people, as they get older, they're like, this is how I see things, and that is it. And that's when you get into trouble, when you don't open your mind a little bit. You know? Yeah. So for those cumulative experience for you to have lived lives so young you have that sort of perspective to move forward and it's yeah. pretty special pretty yeah. special i would say yeah and there's, i mean there's people like i like i said like people have stories you know and you just have to be willing to and like yeah interested so yeah like, it's my whole you know, show that's what i do and literally like everywhere i went anytime i saw a black person in a place where i didn't like see many people of color yeah i literally go why are you here yeah <laughs> like, how did you end up here like what's your story right and right away we're like yeah oh yeah you, you know? have that that you have that shorthand yeah it's like i met um i met a lot of africans in romania doing oh the yeah they were part they were they were part of um they were playing extras in a movie that Stomp, the creators of Stomp was producing. And um, they were really talented. They were like break dancing and like- Oh, cool. They made, like they had this kind of like the Romanian gymnast and the, the, the Africans, they were like doing hip hop and like the Romanian gymnasts were doing a lot of things that like break dancers could do. So they were just like really, that was really popular yeah. for them. And, um, and, you know, I asked them like, why, how, why Romania? Like, why are <laughs> Republic of Congo? Like, how did you yeah. get there to here? And they were like, well, you know, we had tribal wars and one day our village was invaded and, you know, people like my family members were, got their limbs chopped off and amputated and yeah. I saw my sister die and I, you know, I saw my mother get killed. And so there was a lot of like children that were orphaned and, and abandoned and Romanian government was offering visas for wow. asylum and get out of there. to get out of there. Wow. They offered them a place to be safe. So a, a lot of them went there to a lot of Africans in Romania. Yeah. And, and, you know, and we're, we're in Romania is not, Romania is, um, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, they had just hung their dictator like 10 years prior to when I was Ooh. there. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It, it, they were, but like, 
Romanian citizens were like not allowed to leave, like travel freely. Hmm. Like they had to like have their like houses on collateral and their bank accounts on collateral to make sure that they come back. Wow. You know? Yeah. Like, they were, they had to have a special visa to travel. To right. Pay. It no. gets intense real fast. Yeah. They, I, it's they, it's interesting though. The the thing that sticks out to me when you say that is these people that have experienced this horror, that are seeking asylum, are dancing. Like the perseverance of the human spirit, and it's like this. So just ah. Yeah, and it's so funny because um, they were um, they were like these. In Romania, there's like these um, abandoned dogs. They have like a, they don't like neuter dogs. So there's like hundreds of dogs. Like right. Dogs. Just strays. They like, like, you'd be like walking down the street and then there'll be like a pack of dogs like. Oh, just checking you out. A pack and just, they're all like this, like, like looking, <laughs> looking like wolves, you know? Sure. And, and you're just like, oh shit. I was like, there's the there was a dog and we'd like back up slowly and then run because they'd run after you. They were like wolves. They were like these dogs. Oh, no. <laughs> it, was, it was horrible. Um, oh no. Anyway, like, you know, uh, what, what, what happened? Oh yeah. And then they had like, you know, it was, it's, it was such an estate. Like mothers would come up to me and be like, can you take my child with you? Can you take her to America? Like, Oh man. Hey, like the gypsies were on the street and just like begging and it yeah, was, it was really it was it was it was a really like eye opening thing. Like you know, also made you appreciate what you had. Sure. Like how the world, like how like the it made you appreciate like the freedoms of America. I guess what I sure. Would say. You know what I mean? It's um, that dichotomy. It's not perfect. Yep. Uh, yeah. <laughs> At all, but um, but when you go to other places, you're just like, whoa. Um, right. It uh, that per that perspective. Perspective is everything. Perspective. I the the Romanians were like cooking um, food for the cast. You know, they were uh -huh. like barbecuing chicken, but they were like using wood from like abandoned buildings. Oh, okay. It wasn't like hickory you know. sure yeah. it was <laughs> wood it was it was wood. Like, yeah it's, it's no, no, no we have we have had a couple nails and lead paint on it um, sure flavor flavor <laughs> so, so um they were cooking and then we were all like and it, no it sounds like we were like oh wait they're cooking our chicken on wood right <laughs> That's that's when like the American thing came. I was in. about to say. <laughs> like, we're all like down or like whatever, but we're not high maintenance. But we were definitely like, wait, you're not cooking our chicken on this this wood, like not right. this. <laughs> so I think we all like made a trip to like McDonald's. We'd rather have McDonald's than I. Than I understand. <laughs> um. Again, which I don't even advocate because you sure. Know, better habits. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You're young. You know, you're traveling the world. I get it. <laughs> so, so, um, the the Romanians and the 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 the, the Africans mm -hmm. were like, "What's wrong with you? It's food. You don't want to eat, right? You don't want to eat. Like, what's wrong? They're like, as they're eating, they're like, you don't want to eat. It's food. It's good. It's what's wrong? Like, what's yeah. wrong?" With because they're looking at us like you don't want to eat this chicken because of it's not the wood that you like. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Are you not hungry? <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. You, you know, when I look back at it, I was like, oh my god, they're probably like those entitled. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Um, do, you, do you come away from a trip like that, having seen the world with like? perspective for sure but do you have do you walk from that with a confidence in yourself having experienced that much life in such a short amount of time you know what i feel like those experiences um 
helps me connect with people more and it also helps me identify the bullshit oh yeah your meter is so much so much broad i could see right through people yeah it's i could and 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 the thing is it's okay sure i don't i'm not like i'm not I, I'm not judging or anything. It's just people could only operate from what they know. Totally. You yeah, know, you're right. Operate from what they know, what they've experienced. So it's like when I I've experienced all this, I've met so many people. I've, you know, I'm in, I, I've, I'm informed. Um, and living in the place with them i kind of you just you just learn a lot you learn their their humor their politics uh, why they're against this or that like they really sit down with you and they give you their honest it's not like something written in a paper it's like not proper. Right. i feel like it's not propaganda really and you know granted it's like very anecdotal anecdotal like sure. at the time, but um that's not a word. Is that, did I say that word right? Okay. Anecdotal. 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 I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. I could be wrong. I don't know words. <laughs> anecdotal. It's anecdotal. Uh, I'm like, oh, wait, I didn't say that right. Right. Yeah. That felt different. <laughs> <laughs> different. I'm just doing a spell check. You know what I'm saying? That's right. I don't. I just let it fly. <laughs> Hey, and I will call myself out. I have no qualms about that. Same. I'm, I'm not perfect. Um, yeah, for real. Same, same. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I feel informed. And and like I said, like some people, I, you know, I, they, they, they operate from what they know. And I, sometimes I feel bad. And sometimes if they're open to let me talk to them and share and maybe inform them, cool i always have that story but sometimes that doesn't happen you know and right (sighs) there's like an understanding like i get it you're you're a product of your environment so like you're not going to hear what i'm saying i get that but it takes someone who's been through things to identify that in someone to realize you're hitting a brick wall yeah i that makes sense i i wonder because like you wanted to do dance growing up and then very early on stomp world tour so you are thrown into the deep end and then i know since like you mentioned you've done choreography and stuff like that and there has to be something there you know yeah yeah i mean wait what was the question again i'm sorry there wasn't one i was just saying you're doing cool stuff (laughs) you do choreography i think it's cool and how do you have the confidence (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I'll learn to talk to people one day, Raquel. I'll figure it out. <laughs> I, did. I did the show, and then I, I, I left the show, and then uh-huh. two years later, they, st- they, they, they still embraced me and called me back through those years to, oh. to, to, um, to fill in and to, um, really? to co- cover and swing for the shows. So I was really lucky. From, like, 96 to 2000, I went full-time. Hell, yeah. To L.A., started doing like music videos and film and TV and that kind of stuff. Sure. And in between, Stomp had, you know, Raquel, we need you to cover China. Raquel, we need you to cover, you know, uh, Indiana. We need to, you know, whatever. Sure. whatever. The world. <laughs> and it was, you know, and then I ended my stint in 2008 when I was swinging for Stomp in Las Vegas. They oh, Okay. So I did that and um and I was I was also swinging for another show in Las Vegas. Um, Sheesh. Wayne Brady was doing a, a variety show in Vegas. Oh cool. I was swinging for his show. But in between then from 2000 to then, I was doing a lot of like you know, a lot of dance work, a lot of commercials. That was Sure. That's the bread and butter. That was my bread and butter. Mhm. Um, a lot of commercials. Um, and then, um, I had Marley. Oh yeah. 2009, we had Marley and, you know, I kind of like perspective kind of settled in and I bet focused on, on, on him, raising him. But I was, you know, really blessed that we were, we still kind of kept our momentum 
Mm-hmm. I, did, I no longer wanted to tour anymore, but um, understandable. Yeah, but um, I still managed to keep my creativity. And you know, as you get older, you're not going to be like, you know, dancing behind some young, you know. Sure. <laughs> the backflips like, are in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, I started then doing doing fitness, and um, that was that served my purpose of just like a way to help people Mm -hmm. Um, instead of feeling like I was on in someone's beck and call. I just felt like, Oh, I have a purpose in where I can help people feel good. I can still use, I can still have a microphone and still like feel like I'm performing and um, give people hope and have something kind of steady in my life, like a steady schedule, you know? Sure. um, I started doing that. And then I was like, that's when, and then I started creating my own thing and, um, that has been great. Um, I still haven't had like some invest investor be like, Hey, Raquel, I think that's you're awesome. Here's a million dollars. So let, let's do it for real. <laughs> Yet. Yet. <laughs> but you know, it's cool because it's funny because like people see what I do and then they're like, can you help me do my thing? And I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I, was like, I was like, look, I'm going to do my thing. And I don't know how I'm going to make my thing go, go, but you know, at the end of the day, I mean, I know people, I know people that are like, I'm doing my own thing. I'm not going to do blah, blah. I'm like, at the end of the day, it's like, I'm still serving a purpose. Like I'm still, Hell yeah. I'm still doing me. hundred percent. I mean, and like, if I could help someone else, why not? I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree want to hoard myself to for my thing sure you know what i mean i i i want to i want to be in service i want to practice i want to to share oh yeah Um, it's important I, i feel like i'm doing a service still like sharing and and being part of great people and being part of other people's stuff and that and it that gives me just the same amount of joy. Yeah. Hell yeah. I, and I, anyone that has that sort of flame in them, I think it's like a, um, I, I don't know if moral is the correct word, but I'll just use it anyway. It's like a moral obligation for somebody that has that sort of fire to spread it. You know what I mean? Like you've got all this, like get, get out there. You, you'll be amazed what you can see if you enable someone else and be like, hey, let me warm you up a little bit and then see them shine. It's like, I think it's a beautiful thing you're doing. It's because yeah. cor- I, I think about like, I watch your rock your best videos and I'm, I just think about all the work that went into them. I'm like, people have no idea what, went. this is not a, like, I'm just going to wake up and just do this. I was like so much thought and effort and heart went into this little thing. And yeah. like choreography fascinates me because you have to come up with it. <laughs> choreography every week. I give my class choreography every week. I, oh. I, I, I I'm in my house and I hear music and I get inspired and I'm like, and then it takes me, people don't realize the sweat equity. Like, oh, I bet. And they're like, I make it look easy. I think for them. Yeah. And they're like, you can, Hey, can you teach this thing? We'll give you $10 for it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> you um, don't understand what you're seeing. I feel like I've been training for like 30 years. Um, I have a, certifications and I have a degree two 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 degrees I spent like 20,000 gazillion hours in the studio practicing yeah I've, like I, the hours that I put in it's like it doesn't come easy like you know you can't like compensate someone for like how easy in the, sh- the time it's like it, that's not what it is it's the you're paying for the training. Science. You're paying for the years building up. To, I totally agree. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you don't argue with like, you know, about lawyers or doctors. They're like, yeah. <laughs> you don't have some advice and you're like talking. They're like, okay, that's $300 for two minutes. And you're like, oh, okay. Um, right. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It, 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 time, it's like their knowledge, you know. It's that, true. 
It's true. I well, I think about like in the same vein as like martial arts. You know, when you see someone and they're like they swing a sword, you're like, oh, that looks so easy. I was like, that took forty years to figure out. Like, you don't understand the intricacies of what this is. But that's <laughs> that's the plight of the artist, <laughs> you know. <laughs> For like hours, just that same move. Exactly. And that's the same thing. Like, I remember the, f actually, I'll tell you, the first time I was uh, made aware of you, what made me first know who you were, was uh, after Vox Lux came out. Oh, yeah. That's what did it. That's what did it. Because I remember Natalie Portman talked about uh, her movement coach to teach her to move like a star was you. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I've never... I never thought about this. So then I started following you and then I found out the connection and I was like, what a oh, small world. Like, crazy. how cool is that? How do you, how do you teach someone to be a pop star? <laughs> like what? It's so funny. Cause she was like, Hey, would you be interested in, in training me for Vox Lux? And I'm like, what, I, <laughs> what, what are you asking me right now? Right. What does that mean? I was like, yeah, like what? I was like, huh? <laughs> uh, so the, so like so the thing is with the pop stars um you know natalie's a great she's a really good mover but um it's just like this this attitude this confidence this this um this really owning your womanhood yeah you know what i mean sure being unapologetic and Taking outward yeah yeah, yeah. Out in, in your walk and the way you hold your head and the way you like receive your audience. It's like, there's so many like ways to like really coach someone to feeling like a pop star. Like every, every pop star is different, right? Everyone has their voice. Sure. And, you know, we, we talked about like what she wanted to like embolden in this, in this, in this star of hers. And we just kind of like collaborated and I didn't go against her, her grain. I didn't go against like her organic self. It's just like, we just amplified it, amplified it and, and made it hers. Yeah. I was really proud of her. Yeah. I was really, Hell of a movie, man. Yeah. It was, it was so good. Just like, she was just like, she just had that like, get it. Like, you know, I don't, I don't like to use the word swag, but it was really like she did have a swag about her. Yeah. Yeah. Just walking down the street. I was like, oh, snap. She's having conversations. There's that, yeah, that outward sort of like unapologetic, this is me and I'm going to make you see me. <laughs> yeah. And even when she walks out on stage on that stage, that's like her moment. Yeah. It's like her busting through a paper. It's just like, it's just... You know, Get even it. if she's walking slow, it's like she's in molasses and she's just, she's really owning it. So it was, it was really, an on I was really honored that she asked me because she could have asked anybody. So it's just like, you know, even like when you're being coached by someone, you also want to have some kind of comfortability with the person and right. kind of share the same kind of language. Just I, We were able to kind of communicate really well together, like, you know, even things that we try things and if it didn't, something didn't work, we're like, no, let's move. Like, let's, let's, let's find something that really sinks into your bones. Yeah. So that's what a coach really should do. It's like, really like not stray away from the person, but take that little thing. That's really awesome. And just like, okay, we're, we're growing from that. We're gonna yeah. Grow when you're doing choreography, do you kind of go that route as well where you find like something and then just fan the flame and fan the flame and then kind of go from there? It's more feeling that you built? Yeah, I, I, I kind of let the music speak to me and I, I know it sounds kind of pokey pokey, but I love it. I, I, I kind of let the music take me and then sometimes like I'll be, it's different. Like sometimes I'll be inspired by the music. Sometimes I'll be inspired by a shape sometimes oh, i'll like cool. play in the move play in the um sometimes i'll play in the mirror and i'll just move and i'll just like something and i'll just like kind of repeat it oh, cool. and, and then i'll just kind of do it and then i'll just find some music and try to and maybe it won't fit but it'll just kind of like change because of the music and then and then um then I then I'll go. Okay, you know what? I want to like do something where I'm changing a level. 
So then I'll just change a level and then I'll take this and I'll change a level. And I was like, okay, this would be nice if I could just do a spin here. What can I, how can I make this? Like I, I, I literally like workshop in my head. Oh, it's so cool. It's all organic. It's not like, it's not a math thing. It's a feel. It's a spirit. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And then sometimes like I'll have a routine and then I'll play with it and I'll just like, let me play the slower music and do the same choreography to this music oh. that way. And then sometimes I'll do that in class. I'll just like, okay, we're going to do this music. Now I want to see everyone do it to this music and, f and let the music take you. And you're going to feel really slow, but I really want you just to listen to it, do the same choreography. And then like, that's how you learn variation. That's how you learn in life. Some rhythms change. Some of your flow changes. Yeah. You have to go with that flow and not fight it. And it could be just as, uh, as effective and it could be just as beautiful, just as expressive as you going in a different tempo. Yeah, you know I love I mean? that. You're like so a lot of, yeah, a lot of my lessons when I'm teaching is like very metaphorical. Like it's very about life. It really is about life. Yeah. It's about um, that one step you can't get sure like okay you're doing a project the person won't answer your phone calls you're trying to get the, the thing for your thing like all right you know what call somebody else or you know what skip that step you'll get to that let's get to what the next thing yeah keep moving keep yeah. moving you know so i'm like and i'm like and if there's that one move that you the only you first eight counts you could do and you do it really do it well <laughs> yeah because, you know, a lot of people are just remembered for that one thing. Yeah, that's true. That well. Yeah. You know, like, do it, you know, and, and if, you, if you're having trouble with the other stuff, I've become such a good improviser because of dance. Because sure. I've always been taught, like, you can't stop. So I have no choice. Oh, yeah. That's a good point. Touch up to the next step. Yeah, that's that's a so great point. I've always been a great improviser, always, because you the sh the show has to go on. You mm -hmm. have to. I've seen so many shows where the artist was like, "Oh my god, did you see me mess up? I was supposed to do this thing, and then something happened." And I was like, "No, I didn't see it at all, and it was great." Yeah. <laughs> so it's like a lot of times it's just like you. Yeah in the way yeah because no one else really notices unless you work for like this crazy maniac that is like you're fired because yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean i heard the wrong note you put this away you get <laughs> exactly, so. yeah well it's like a famous story about like prince where like if he ever played a wrong note he would then play it again so even if someone who was listening to it would think he did it on purpose yeah i was like that's yeah. That's theater though. You know, you can't stop. The audience doesn't know you did a wrong line. The audience doesn't know you missed a cue. Like it's live. Let's just keep moving. And yeah. I'm at, that's super empowering what you're doing to have people kind of be and come from, it's all inward to outward as opposed to like, these are the steps. It's less technical and more yeah. organic. And it's also like the class, you know, I, I'm redefining the way I explain my class, like mm -hmm. rock class is a movement experience experience it's oh experience, um where you, where we incorporate dance we incorporate fitness um but it really is about building confidence and getting to know your body and getting to really sit into your skin and own it yeah you know? And, and I tell everyone you have to rock your best because there's some days that you don't feel your best, but you have to do the best that you can at that moment. At that moment, you have to just do the best. You can't just phone it in. There's no, there's really no room for that. I, I, I just feel like people just kind of like, they don't give themselves enough credit. Yeah. And I wouldn't have gotten to where I, I've gotten to if I didn't dig deep. True. Um, I would, I would, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have um, been able to survive this business if I didn't um, just 
believe in myself a little bit more than everybody else. Yeah, absolutely. It's you know? so actually that's a that's a great point. Is there something like as someone who has been a professional dancer for you know some of the biggest names in award shows and like you've done everything for so long? Do you have like a piece of advice that you would give to people that wanted to get into dance or any sort of movement that you've picked up over the course of your incredible life? Um, you know what? I, you have to do it for the love of doing it. Not for, not for being famous or not for dancing for someone. You have to do it because you want to do it. You love the art form. I would, I would um, try to study with the best that you can find. Um, I would learn the history. I would learn, um, you know, the people that studied with the person that you want to study with. You know, sure. um, I would encourage people to create their own art. Absolutely. Um, in my day, we didn't really have, you know, YouTube and stuff like that. Right. Uh, until like until I was in it, you know. But sure. Um, kids today, like, they can make their own content. They could create their own styles. Um, but definitely, I feel that they need, and they're phenomenal, but I feel like they really need to keep in mind the people that have come before them and yeah. the, the, the history of these forms. Because, like, you know, people study ballet, they don't know who Balanchine is or Bershnikov or, like, yeah. you know, jazz. They don't, they don't know, like, you know, there's, like, all these different kind of jazz, like jazz funk, jazz, Broadway jazz, jazz, uh, standard jazz, like bass. I don't know. They have all these names and fusions. Yeah. Classes. And it's like, find a master and learn that. Yes. Once you, once you learn your discipline, then you could start fusing stuff. Sure. You know, these kids are like doing these fusions of this and that. And I'm like, or like, you know, modern dance, like, you know, there's a Graham, there's Lamone, there's Horton. And then like, someone will come up and be like, modern fusion. And I'm like, okay, so who did you study with? And we're like, I don't know. It's just like a little bit of, <laughs> I'm like, huh? What? Right. <laughs> well, look, I would just recommend that you study a discipline, you know? Yeah. Then when you're proficient in that, then you could start fusing stuff. I'd also recommend that people like try try to have a multidiscipline as well. Yeah. Like make sure you touch everything because a lot of shows require you to different styles and oh. adaptability. So, you know, unless you want to be like a ballerina or something just focused, but if you want to work in the commercial world, sure. You need to like you know, have some tricks up your sleeves. There you go. You know, but um, really, it, you really have to, and, and there, and, and it's not just limited to, you're not just limited to performing. You you could choreograph, you can movement coach, you could, um, you could teach in schools. Like there's so many um, options that you could, um, you could, you could, you could strive for in the dance dance world you could be a producer for dance shows you could be sure. you know I mean? so many things that you could go into so you're not just a slave to be a performer because right. that's a short-lived occupation um so if you know if you want to choreograph you know it'd be great to get on a team as an assistant you know to a choreographer and you know work on projects and and concept videos and things like that and you know yeah that's what i would that's what i would kind of sure someone getting in because it's not this i don't know if it's the same anymore but it's it's a lot more competitive yeah for sure a lot more competitive um you know it's a it's a big popularity contest especially now Unfortunately, yeah, like, you know, I didn't, you know, I think the most commercial thing that would happen in my day would be, um, like, the artist would have, like, their B camera roll for their DVD. Yeah. 
you know, the like behind the scenes of their tour or something like that. That's right. Um, or, you know, MTV would come in and be like, you know, uh, you know, tape their auditions or whatever. But now it's like you go for an audition, they're asking how many followers you have. Yeah. That's so weird. And I'm like, oh my God. And that's a thing where it, it's like, I had so much experience and I guarantee my Instagram follower numbers, following numbers do not reflect. No. <laughs> do not reflect. No. <laughs> my at all. I'm like, all that I did and that's, they're going to judge me by, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> I, I'm like, the, I'm so grateful that I am not in the game like I used to be. With sure. Because the whole Instagram followers and your Twitter fo- followers and all that stuff is just like. Ugh. Oh, yeah. And it's like, it's like we said at the beginning. None of that stuff matters anyway. It's not real. <laughs> But oh man, Raquel, I could talk to you all day long, and oh, this has been a blast. I know. I don't even know. If, I I don't even know if I I stayed in a streamlined conversation. I I, I hope I- not, because I don't do anything streamlined. <laughs> this was a joy. I was so excited to get to talk to you, and this was so fun. And uh, I mean, I can't take up you know the rest of your night. But <laughs> before I let you go, I have to ask: Where can people find you online? Rock your best. Talk to me. Okay, so um, Rock Your Best. I have an Instagram. It's uh, Rock Your Best underscore fit. Find me there. And usually, like in my bio, I'll put like where my classes are or I'll post um, or rockyourbest.com. Um, what else? Um, oh, I'm, I'm going to, I have a little part in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Called, yeah, it's called Sylvie's Love. And Love it. It stars, it stars Tessa Thompson and Nandi Ashimunga, and it comes out December 23rd on Amazon Prime. Love it. I play a role called Connie. Um, Beautiful. Yes. And um, that's exciting. My first feature role. Yeah, congrats. That's huge. I love it. Thanks. So don't give up on your dreams, kids. That's right. <laughs> Life exists after 30. <laughs> <laughs> God, I hope so. I hope next year. <laughs> Oh, man. Uh, what else um yeah i think that's that's all for now but um i'm gonna keep continue to do my rock your best i'm gonna continue to to act and i'm gonna continue to dance and and do all the things i do until i can't walk anymore because it's Hell just yeah. what keeps me going and um i hope i i uh inspire inspire someone along the way I mean, you've inspired me. So, hey, that's one. (laughs) It's been such a pleasure to get to finally sit down and talk to you. I'm so honored that you asked me to come on here. And uh, uh, we didn't talk anything Star Wars. No, uh, because this is about you. (laughs) (laughs) But Ahmed Best is my Star Wars um, wallet. He's in my wallet. That's right. That's all we need. Keep keep him there. This is is the Raquel show. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I love it. And friends thank you so much for listening to this episode of the interesting podcast if you'd like to follow the show it's at pod of interest on twitter if you'd like to follow me i'm at jedi brian on all social media sites you can also find me at brianbalance.com there you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff if you enjoyed this episode please share it and tell your friends a good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here speaking of cool stuff we now have merch just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. I've also got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Bernice, Chris, Ben, Jim, 
Daz, Kelly, Daryl, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I cannot tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well.